The following market update content was created by Ivan Gruel, Chartered Financial Analyst and Chief Investment Officer at Avantax. Hello, I'm Sandeep Varma, President and CEO of ATS Wealth Management. Today, we will provide a market update for February. We'll start with a recap of returns for January, then shift the discussion to the Federal Reserve, earnings, the economy, and the debt ceiling. January saw strong performance in both stocks and bonds across the board. In the U.S., the S&P 500 gained more than 6% in total return while the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index rallied nearly 3% in total return. International markets saw another strong month of performance as well, as the MSCI Acqui X U.S. Index gained more than 8%. Emerging markets added more than 9% for the month, as China's shifted from zero COVID policy bolstered investors' sentiment. January saw a continuation of recent trends like a weakening dollar, slowing inflation, and improving credit spreads, all of which helped bolster asset prices in January. However, in contrast to 2022, growth stocks outperformed value, with outperformance coming from sectors like communication, technology, and consumer discretionary. Meanwhile, sectors like healthcare, utilities, and staples underperformed. As we move through the early stages of this year, the future path of monetary policy remains one of the greatest unknown for investors. In the Federal Reserve's most recent meeting on February 1st, central banks once again pumped the brakes on the pace of rate hikes, enacting a widely anticipated 25 basis point increase. With the target range for the federal fund rate now sitting at 4.5% to 4.75%, investors are left wondering how much further the central banks may need to go to achieve price stability. In the press conference following the announcement, Fed Chair Jerome Powell indicated that the Fed may be nearing the end of its rate hike campaign. While careful to note that it's still premature to claim victory over inflation, the markets responded positively to the guidance suggesting that this inflationary process is well underway. Shifting gears to earnings, fourth quarter earnings season is well underway in the U.S., with nearly one-third of the companies having already reported fourth quarter results. As of last month and approximately 70% of companies have beaten the earnings expectation, slightly below the long-term average. Management commentary across sectors highlighted that higher input costs and stronger dollar continue to negatively impact results. Notably, as shown in the chart, margin contraction has been the largest detractor in earnings, while revenue has grown modestly. As we move through the final quarter of earnings for the last year, we expect the markets will remain particularly sensitive to forward guidance from companies as the threat of recession of 2023 still looms. On the economic front, data continues to give mixed signals. The manufacturing sector is arguably already in a recession, and the housing market has slumped. Yet factory and construction employment remains elevated. Recently, fourth quarter GDP numbers at the end of January showed that the economy grew by 2.9% annualized rate, despite the economy contracting for two consecutive quarters in the first half of the year. More than half of the gains came from inventory accumulation, a trend that should reverse going forward. However, net exports came in better than expected and should continue as tailwinds from growth going forward. In addition, boosts in real personal income along with a very tight labor market should allow consumers, which are the main engine for the economy, to remain resilient. Finally, on January 19th, the U.S. Treasury reached the debt limit which currently stands at $31.4 trillion. While this figure has been reached, 
This does not mean that the government will necessarily default on the U.S. debt. Through various mechanisms, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen expects the government can finance its obligation until early June. Historically, lawmakers generally wait until the last minute on the debt limit, but they have always come to a resolution. To the tune of 89 times since 1959, par for the course, we expect Congress will do the same this time around. Broadly speaking, markets tend to largely ignore the debt ceiling and the shutdowns. For now, the markets tend to agree as interest rate continues to move lower. Taking cues from economic data and the Federal Reserve instead of headlines from Washington. In the meantime, our focus remains on the persistent long-term drivers for the market performance, like the economy, corporate profits, and central bank policy. So that's what we have for you this month. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the trust and confidence that you have placed with us over the years, and we'll see you next month.